there are so many factors we could be keen to observe to ensure that our relationship is still healthy or not. And um, there are so many factors actually out there if you're very good in observing. But I will be talking about seven factors out of so many out there which we all might have observed personally or individually. One of those factors uh, gives you time to call or attend to your calls, stroke messages, or rather consider them less important. Now, what do I mean? If you truly feel like you're in a relationship with someone, I do not see any reason why you shouldn't be able to call this person at any given time. I should not see any reason why you would have to take a whole lot of time to get back to this person that you claim to be in a relationship with. Reading about relationship issues, I decided to share my own insight about that. If I am in a relationship, my girlfriend, my wife cannot call me at any given time, then that means that's a problem. But let me use the girlfriend aspect here so we can find better understanding because when it comes to that of the marriage, he, he might still do the same thing to you when he tells you he had traveled for a business seminar, conference, business trip, or whatever. But relationship, we can find proper understanding because you and your lover don't live in the same house. If I get to call up a girl who is my girlfriend always, trying to reach her, and then she's not picking up her calls, I'd send her messages, She's not responding. Okay, fine. A lot of people go with the idea that people get busy. It is all right. But I bumped into a blog that says, if someone do not reply your message or return your calls within an hour, then something is wrong. <laughs> yes, because in the world we are today, we don't stay off our phone for more than an hour. Even if you're a businessman, you really need to go back to your phone to check if there's anything you need to attend to. Even if you're in the office, you really need to check on your phone. Now, that blog says it's an hour, but then I say it's like two hours. I'm putting it two hours. Probably that person would be in a meeting, or that person would be, could be driving, or that person is not in a position to get back to you. But then, we are talking about who you are with in a relationship. It's different from just someone you consider being a friend. Relationship aspect, yeah, it's like a family member of you is trying to get in contact with you urgently you really need to reply them because you do not know why they have contacted you. Now, I tend to wonder if I chat up a girl that I'm supposed to be in a relationship with or rather I'm in a relationship with, you see? <laughs> it's funny, actually. And then she is not responding back to me. She's taking a whole lot of hours responding back to me. I would give her the benefit of doubt that she could be busy and she doesn't have the time to look into her phone. But then should I say I want to wait for three hours, she's not getting back to me? 
then that means something is wrong with her. That means she's not okay. But if she gets back to me, and then she's okay and fine, but yet presents some excuses as to why she did not get back to me on time. It's all right. We're going to let that slide. You see, sure, I'll let it be. I will understand the fact that we oftentimes get these impromptu activities that we really need to look into, especially those ones that are very, very much important. And being a lover to someone, you ought to have that understanding, right? Good. But if it persists, then something is not right. Because I wouldn't call up my girlfriend at the depth of the night. She would not pick up my calls because she don't know what I'm going through. She don't know if I am in a bit of trouble or if I need an urgent assistant at that point. She does not pick up my calls and then return me back in the morning around 10 a.m. Something is not right. If I get to chat my girlfriend and she's not replying me, she had to take a whole lot of hours to get back to me, something is not right. This is 2019. But then, what kind of a person will I be? I'd rather be a stupid and foolish man to not see these things coming. And now for the ladies out there, when you put a man in such a scenario or in a position like that, and yet he keeps not having a reason to realize what you are up to. Two things is involved. One, the man knows what your actions are about. Two, he has been stupid and is a foolish man. Why I said one, he knows something about those actions that you're showcasing to him. He keeps silent. Why? Because someday he wants to return back the cake in which you have given to him. That's the payback time, like back to back. But the other option is you should be ashamed of yourself as a woman or as a lady that you are doing all these things to another guy and yet he's got no clue. You should be ashamed of yourself that you are engaging yourself with a kind of guy or a man that is low. Let me put it very low when it comes to internet. Because these are things we should see clearly. I do go to bed early. I sleep early. Otherwise, I have something that is keeping me up late. That is understandable. I personally do that. I oftentimes go to bed 8, 9 p.m. and I'm easy. Then I get up at 5. So if you call me at that time and I don't respond to your call, you as my girlfriend should know that I'll be far asleep. But then I could still use that as a reason to cheat on you. Now, which is why I oftentimes tell people that to every truth, there's a back door and ought to be investigated. So when these people you supposedly think or feel you're in a relationship with them, they have to choose a time for you to call. They have to choose when to reply your messages. They have to choose when to get in touch with you. Then you should understand that something is not right. Now, the second factor is never comfortable using their phone around you. Yeah, um, when I say this is Screen Live Entertainment Channel, I mean it for real. This is real fact shit. I put it the way it ought to be. I studied the way that you can find it in reality. Because I do not just assume 
I tell you things that I may have gone through or I may have observed from people or rather my friends or what I have seen people lament about. It's a real top show. I tell not to keep anything on the low. There's nothing that ought to be kept in the closet right now. Now, there used to be a time when I was in a relationship back then. You see, we're talking about like four years ago. There are things I, I tend to not understand. When my girlfriend is around me, I hardly get to use my phone. Now, do you know why I, I can't get to use my phone? Because when you're talking to an opposite sex, especially someone that you're in a thing with, or someone you're interested in, that's always a kind of commitment you give to Ray. You ought to be devoted to Ray. And you cannot be devoted into a conversation with someone else on the phone while you're sitting close to your girlfriend. She would not only get that straight because she's a fool, but if she's smart and intelligent, she would definitely know that my dude is up to something, that my dude is talking to someone else. And to put it right to you, sometimes we often get to forget that we sit close to our partner. If you understand that, you know, that girl says something that really looks so nice. You understand? That sounds so nice, rather. Or maybe she sends you a very good picture that looks nice and cool. You see, without you knowing, you're going to smile. There's a different kind of look that's going to wear up on your face. If your girlfriend understands that, then your girlfriend should know that you're up to something. Because what kind of a conversation are you having on the phone with someone that would give you that kind of joy? I don't get it. So it, it means when someone is around you, your supposed partner, your lover, and yet they're not comfortable using their phone around you, then something is not right. Because I don't see any reason as to why I cannot use up my phone around my girlfriend if I am chatting to just a friend who is a female friend of mine. What do you have to hide? The fact that we need to still understand is this. Truth has a way to showcase itself. And only the guilty are afraid. Do you understand that? If I'm with my girlfriend and I'm chatting with my friend who is a female and opposite sex of me and I'm sitting around my girlfriend, I should be comfortable to carry out that conversation. Do you know what that means? It means I've got nothing to do with this person. I should be comfortable to an extent that even if my girlfriend got to grab my phone from me, she will go through the conversation and realize, oh, indeed, he was talking to his female friend. Yes, people do have opposite sex as friends. It's not a biggie. I could keep a whole lot of girls as friends, and then a lady could keep a whole lot of guys as friends. We are in the world where people say the opposite sex are the kind of people I like to be friends with. It's all right. But then, that can still be a reason for cheap. <laughs> so everything I tell you, I always wanted to understand that. That's a backdoor to everything. That's a reason as to why you can manipulate any situation. So you have to be very smart. As much as I would keep a whole lot of girls as friends, and then my girlfriend know about it, that I got a whole lot of females who are just my friends. I got nothing intimate with them. 
But then if she becomes too comfortable about that, I could also be cheating on her in the same process. That's just the reality of it. So, in that case, we oftentimes rather not want to go close to our phones at all because we don't want to raise suspicion. We don't want to start that conversation with the other person and yet we can't finish it because we don't want to give the other person an insight to believe that I am not comfortable where I am to have that communication with her. So, in a nutshell, we decide to go off our phones. If it happens persistently, constantly, something is not right. Because you can be a slave to your device when you are close to your partner. But when you are not close to your partner, you are always online. Let me put it to you this way. Whenever you're with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, they hardly get online. You sitting close to him or being in the same house with him, you can both least say or tell that I don't think my boyfriend has been online for like 30 minutes because none is important going in there. But the minute you leave your boyfriend, you got to see your boyfriend being online for like hours. What does that explain to you? It means these people are not comfortable using their phones around you. But they are comfortable using their phones when they are far from you. That is personal slavery. If you feel you're with someone and it's automatically enslaving you from using your device, then something is not right. We have to be very realistic about this. We don't have to be very sentimental about it. We need to be very, very open with it. This is just an open conversation, you see. We have to realize that something is not right. Because if I'm with my girlfriend, I cannot be seen online for even 30 minutes, I'm off. Then the minute my girlfriend is out of my sight and she's gone home, oh, hell no, I'm going to be online for like 10 hours. Something seemingly is not right. Because your supposed lover or your partner should be comfortable with every action of his or hers around you. So if you find yourself in that position where such is a constant occurrence, then you need to start understanding the fact that your relationship in one way or the other is not healthy. Yeah, uh, the third one I'm going to talk about is changing the caller's name on his or her phone. Now, it is this 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 is one thing that we we all do actually. We often do this one, you know. But then, ask yourself a question: If you feel like your partner is having a side relationship outside yours then you, 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 you tend to be observant about it. And then your partner choose to change the name of the caller or whoever the recipient is. Just so you don't understand that it's that person. That is a reality shit. I've been through it. I had done it. They had done it to me. It's a reality shit. I'm not taking this very personal. I'm just trying to give us insights about knowing when our relationship is healthy or not. You understand? This is Green Day. It's always very, very real. Now, if I'm dating Jane as my side chick, then I got Messi as my real chick. But because I know Jane oftentimes want to call me. You know, it's one thing for me to save Jane's number has Frank. So that even when Jane calls and the phone is on the table while I'm out there with my girlfriend, Mercy, she'll be like, hey, Frank is calling you. You need to talk to Frank. 
And I'll be like, no, there's something he wants me to get done for him. And since I can't get it done, there's no point picking up the call. She'll be like, okay, it's fine. Now, but because Jane, who is the supposed Frank, is a constant caller. Jane always want to talk to you. Jane loves to hear your voice. And for that reason, you cannot say Jane's number as Jane because then your girlfriend will raise the, it will actually raise that eyebrow that your girlfriend will be like, what the hell is going on? Why is she always calling you? She calls you like almost every minute, almost every hour she's on your phone. She wants to talk to you. And you're telling me this person is just your friend, your your friend, you want to put that to me as, you know, women with your attitude. Then for you to be able to manipulate her understanding towards your bad effect, you're going to automatically say Jane as Frank. It costs nothing to do that. So that whenever Jane calls, you have a better excuse to give. And at one point, when you see that Frank had been a constant caller, which in reality is Jane. What do you do? We switch the name again from Frank to Ken. So that it doesn't appear to us that always it is Frank. So let it be it is Frank, now it is Ken. But in the reality of it, it's all about Jane. But I'm going to keep changing this name so that you, are, as my girlfriend, is not going to find the understanding that this one same lady out there who is calling me. But then, if your relationship has gotten to that level, it's not healthy. It's hard time to begin to understand the fact that you yourself needs to be on check. And I don't see any reason as to why you would have to change the name of a caller just because you want to disguise who that person is before your partner. Two things are involved. It's either you are doing that so that your partner will not be aware of who the caller is, or you value that person so much that you would even go that far to change a name because you don't want to lose that person. Because if you're sincere to your partner, I don't see any reason as to why you would want to change your caller's name. If Jane is calling you, oh yeah, let it be Jane. If Massey is calling you, let it be Massey. If Cynthia is calling you, let it be Cynthia. If Tina is calling you, let it be Tina. You need to come out clean. You need to be clean. But then, it does not stop us from still not chilling. It does not stop us from still not hurting our relationship because it can still be Jane. And yes, it is Jane. I got nothing to do with Jane. Which is why I'm still taking us back to making us understand that to every truth there's a back door and ought to be investigated. I don't really, really believe in shit when people tell me shit. I need to be very realistic here. Yeah? I don't really believe in shit. I only believe in only the things I personally verify and confirm to be true or false. When people tell me shit, they oftentimes tell me, you got a problem believing people, trusting people. Why would I trust people? When people are out there beating the light detector machine, why would I believe in people? When you have to commit a murder and then your lawyer, being so good at his profession, wins the case for you, does that make you a non-murderer? No. Why would I believe in people when the salt and cocaine has the same color, but yet the substance is different? Only if verified, tested in a lab to confirm these substances. So if you find yourself in that position where your partner is changing names of those people who are calling him or her constantly, then your relationship is not healthy. Then that means your partner has got a whole lot to hide from you. Then that means your partner is actually doing something that's not right. But then shame on you who is doing that because you know what? You've got one life to live. You have to be proud about every action of yours.
If you feel it is Jane, if I feel like Jane is so much okay for me, I don't want to lose Jane. Why would I change Jane's name on my phone just because I don't want Messi to know? Then that means Jane is worthless. That means Jane is nothing. Because if I can look at Jane and I claim to feel and love Jane, and yet I could still change her name on my phone just because I don't want Messi to detect that, that means Jane means nothing to me. Because when I go to Jane, I don't change Messi's name on my phone. Because you know why? Messi is not a custom caller. And if I had to change Jane's, Jane's name, not to only Frank or a, a, a male's name, then I have to specify a very different kind of name for Jane, then it means there's something that really about Jane that I really do admire. There's something about Jane that I need in my life. There's something about Jane that is so much interesting than Mercy. It's just that for some reasons, Mercy has to be. Mercy being there, maybe it's just for reasons that's best known to whoever is changing the names of those scholars. Maybe Massey could be the one who is available for use at that time. Maybe Massey would be the one who you can boldly call your backbone. Maybe Massey could be the one who you feel like would cry for you when you're crying. But then, if you understand all this shit about Massey, why? Are you keeping Jane? Why would you rather change Jane's name to Frank or Jane's name to a very sweet one? It doesn't make sense. When you get to that level, your relationship is not healthy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, the third one is about your partner or you always been confident to abandon the relationship. Now, when you find yourself in such a mess, like a video I did, saying that, don't be, too, don't be in a hurry to say goodbye. I think um, this part should be referred to that video for a proper understanding, so I will not be throwing more lights to read. I have that video already on the channel that you should not be in a hurry to say goodbye. When we always find ourselves in, in that fix or in that angle of life where we always feel like we are confident about saying goodbye, we are confident about abandoning our relationship. It means, for one, there is no reason as to why I'm not going to wear that Gucci shoe when I know I got no other shoe. Nobody does that. Let's be very realistic. If I'm not wearing that Gucci shoe, it means I've got a Supreme to put on. But what would be that problem that someone want to abandon that relationship in a hurry? Something is not right. Because even if there are, there's a lot of problems in your relationship misunderstanding, it should not prompt you into saying that you, you want to abandon the relationship. Because if you understand how far you and this person have come from, you abandoning, dropping the relationship in a hurry would not even come to your thought. So if you find yourself in that position, two things are involved. Two things are involved in a sense that this person has got an alternative lover or this person really want to break out. But you really want to break out can be controlled because that's where dialogue comes in. But because of an alternate lover, that's a huge problem. Because why? You cannot be with someone who has got a divided attention. When you find actually what that, this factor actually means is been with someone who has got a divided attention. And that is the only reason as to why the person won't abandon the relationship he or she has got with you in a hurry. Because if I am onto Massey and onto Jane, and Massey is giving me a hell of a problem, 
I will be so quick to tell Mercy, I'm done with this shit. Because you know what? Jane is standing by. And not just standing by, I had been in process with Jane. Because if I had not been in process with Jane, I would understand the fact that abandoning the relationship with Mercy is going to take me a whole lot of time to build another relationship to that level, either good or bad. You see? So when you find yourself in that situation, then you know that your partner has got a divided attention. And in a relationship, when you've got a divided attention, it's not healthy. Because all your attention and focus ought to be on one person. If you have differences with that person, all you need to do is talk it out. If you feel like you really want to walk out of that relationship or you really want to let it go, still talk it out. And if you get to the climax where you can no longer behold it anymore, still make it clear. But you should be able to tell yourself the truth. That is the bitter truth I tell people about. Be sure you want to relive that relationship because you feel like it's not healthy for you. Not because you feel because there's an alternative lover out there. You will not be telling yourself the truth. You would only be taking that actions and those decisions because there's somebody else standing in there waiting for you. But then, if you feel that no one cares it's about your life, it is okay. There's one thing we talk about karma. How you treat people is the karma that you get. How you respond to how you respond to people's karma is still the karma you get. There's in life, like I make everybody understand that in everything you do, in every action you put to work, there's a reaction for it. If I tell you lies, there's the karma coming back to me. That karma is going to hit me back. If I hurt you, then you choose to hurt me in return means there's a karma that also awaits you. Which is, most often times, karma don't cease to exist. Because karma is a reflection of our every actions. Whether it is in order, whether it is appropriate or inappropriate. There's always a karma. So whatever decision you want to take to abandon your relationship, ensure that it's a decision that even when the karma comes back to you, it has no negative effect on you. Yeah, um, the fifth one is comparing your relationship to others. Now, I had most of these clues in my videos I had posted before now. You see, in those videos, I had mentioned things like um, when you're out there having fun with your partner, someone, some other person is seated out there staring, wishing to be like you and your partner. Now, which is why I always say that having a good relationship is something that has to do with grace. Some people find it very easy to flow. Reason being that they are not just connected to each other, but they are compatible. That is one part people don't get. Why others are rather connected to each other, but they are not compatible. And if you're not compatible, there's a lot of forces that's going to hit you both. Which is why I oftentimes make people understand that we really indeed need to disagree to come to an agreement. Yes, that is sure. That is only when you're not compatible with someone. Because there is no reason as to why you need to compare your relationship with others. You might be seeing others online whose relationships seem blossom, but the reality of it is yours might be far better. I tend to make people understand one thing. If I pick up my girl and said, okay, baby, let's go out for a lunch date, then I take her out for a lunch date. Someone else out there would be admiring us. Like, look at this guy. He, he can boldly bring his girlfriend out for a lunch date. Mine wouldn't do it. Hell no. Do you know if those people don't even lay on the same bed? Do you know if your problems come up, it's like an earthquake? Do you know what they go through, that even in your relationship, you fight better? That is where we all go wrong. 
You should not compare your relationship to that of others. And if any of your partner is doing that, your relationship is not healthy, which means your partner at one point is fed up of your relationship. Because you need to be contented with whatever you get yourself engaged in. You need to appreciate your relationship the way it is because there is nothing like a perfect relationship. And if you want to doubt my query, you will not tell me for one that you've dated a guy for two years and then you people have never had a happy hour. That's a lie. So why would you want to go overboard because you have realize that other people are having fun. That could be their own happy hours too. Maybe those times you are busy trying to fix your relationship because of the issues, they are busy having their happy hours. And if you are having your own happy hours, they are busy fixing their relationship. Nobody comes out on the road with a billboard and said, hey, my relationship is the worst in the world. No one ever does that. Nobody would do that. People tend to manage their problems in their relationship all by themselves. So the moment I start comparing my partner to the way an, another is operating in their relationship, then that means my relationship is no longer healthy. That means I am not seeing a whole lot of errors from my partner. And it's never healthy. So when you find yourself in that phase and it cannot be worked on, then you've got a problem. Yeah, um, the 61 is about not being confident about you mentioning your partner's name boldly to your friends or your family. Now, it's, this one is actually very tricky. You see, this is a reality shit. I got a lot of people out there who will be bold enough to introduce their boyfriend or their girlfriend or partner, in quote, to their friends and not to their family. Now, if you ask that person, he will tell you or she will tell you, yes, my friends need to know who I'm dating. But before I take it to my partner, to my family, sorry, I need to be assured that it's not going to be a reason for questionings tomorrow. You understand that? Because you will not want to take a man to meet your mother, or you don't want to take a lady to meet your parent, and then tomorrow they're asking you, how about the lady you brought home? Then you'll be like, hell, mom, that girl is bullshit. You wouldn't want to do that. But you can boldly do that to your friends because you know why? We are all friends. We all understand what relationship is all about. It can work and not work out. So before you take that both step to your family, it means a lot. While in the other hand, reverse is the case. Some people out there would really take you to their family and not their friends. Because you know why they are confident to tell their family that, hey, you didn't work out with me. Maybe that's kind of families we don't give a fuck to. I'm using the vocal word, pardon me for that. You understand? They don't give a damn care about that. They just believe in whatever makes you happy as a child will support you into it. But then they cannot boldly introduce you to your friends because you know why? Because they don't want to expose you to their friends with only one reason. So that when you get to end that relationship with them, they will have an opportunity to get into another very quickly. So that if people ask them, are you in a relationship? They'll be like, hell, no, nah, I'm not in a relationship. That's the more reason as to why they would introduce you to their family, but not to their friends. So if you find yourself in these two pictures, your relationship is not healthy. She should or he should be bold enough to introduce you to her family or his family as well as to all his friends or her, all her friends. That is when you understand that your relationship is healthy because there's nothing that has been hidden. Yes, I don't understand why you want to deny 
your partner's existence before your friends or your family, then why are you with that person? Why would you choose to tell the world lies? And why would you choose to tell the world lies? And yet you're not telling the truth to yourself. You should be telling the world that lie, but tell yourself the truth. If I lie to the world that I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a girlfriend, but I do have a girlfriend, then it means I do not appreciate who I'm dating. Then it means automatically I am not sure about what I'm getting myself into or what I'm into. Then that means you do not have a relationship. That means your relationship is pathetic. So if you're not bold mentioning the name of your partner anywhere you are, making them understand the fact that this is my partner. Yes, people, they. Let's look, for example, McMill did at Nicki Minaj. But yet they broke up. Yes, the whole world knows. Has it stopped anything from not moving on? McMill is moving on so well. Nicki Minaj is also doing so well. So that is how it should be. But you cannot see it to be like McMill is dating Nicki Minaj but they are trying to do it as a discrete kind of relationship. It doesn't work like that. If your relationship has gotten to that level, trust me, it's not healthy. If it cannot be worked on, then otherwise should be the option. Yeah, this is the last factor we'll be talking about, which is the seventh factor that we should be keen about and observe to know if our relationship is still healthy or not. Um, when he or she don't feel jealous about you. Yes, we ought to really feel jealous about our partner. You see, there's what it feels to be obsessed. There's another thing that you need that is about being jealous, actually. Now, you can be jealous about your partner because even God gets jealous about us when we have to worship smaller gods. You see? Why? Why are you jealous about someone? You're jealous about someone because you don't want to react to them like you're obsessed because there's a whole lot of different packages to be obsessed and be jealous. You're jealous about this person because you feel for this person. You're, jealous, you, you're always jealous about this person because you love this person. You care so much about this person. You want this person to be for you. Let's take out the part that you can be obsessed, which I would not agree on. But then, if I don't love Marcy and I'm not jealous about her, then that means I won't give a damn care about what she does. Which means, if Marcy is talking to Jude constantly as a side nigger, and then I claim to love Mercy, or Mercy is my supposed lover, and I'm not jealous, then that means Mercy means nothing to me. Because if I really love Mercy and, and I'm jealous about her, I would want to be keen to know what Mercy is up to. That's what being jealous is about, not being obsessed. So anyone out there who truly really loves you, has that little bit of jealousy in them about you. They really want to know what you're up to. They really want to know that you are all for me and me alone. That's how it works. Not being obsessed to go overboard and to turn the table around. No. So if you feel for any reason that your partner do not have any atom of jealousy for you, then that means he doesn't care about what you do. Because if I know that my partner is cheating on me, and I'm not even moved by it. That means I'm bodily cheating upon her too. What we are having is just a game. Should we call it Game of Thrones or Game of Chance? But it's a game. And you won't get jealous about it. And the reason why you will not get jealous about the fact that your partner is cheating upon you is because you don't have feelings. Jealousy flows with feelings, especially when the feeling is strong. So if your partner is not having that little bit of jealousy about you, then your relationship is not healthy. I'm not saying your partner should be obsessed about you. I'm only saying your partner should have that little bit of jealousy to actually get to inquire, to actually want to get worried. She's not back home. What? Oh God, where the hell would she be? Could she be with someone else? 
That's because you care. But don't let it out to destroy your union. Okay, baby, what's up? I've been worried about you. Where have you been? You, you, you're coming home late. Well, what happened? Baby, are you sure you're not out there with your friends? That's because you care. That's because you have a feeling. That little bit of jealousy had to showcase itself. But if that is not happening, trust me, you really need to work on your relationship or otherwise is your alternate option. So those are the seven factors that we need to look into amongst the many out there to confirm that our relationship is still healthy or not. Thanks for watching. This is Green Live Entertainment Channel. Peace out. Much love.